but we're looking at the top of the patient's head. They're lying down in front of us, supine, okay? This is anterior, you can see their nose right here, right, left, frontal bone, parietal bones, occipital bones here. We're gonna put them in a vault hold. We're looking down right at the top of their head. Now let's add our sphenoid. This is our sphenoid here. No, it's not a sphenoid, but as far as 3D goes, this is the best I could do. It's an atlas. And let's add our occiput. No, it's not technically an occiput. It's a sacrum, but it's the best I can do for 3D at this point in time. All right, there's the greater wings of the sphenoid. There's the basi sphenoid, the basi occiput. There's the squama there. Now remember, your second digit or index finger is going to be on the greater wings, and your fifth digit or your pinky finger is going to follow the occipital squama. And remember, wherever the basi sphenoid goes, that's the direction that the sphenoid is moving. We are now going to talk about a lateral strain pattern. This is not physiologic. So the basi sphenoid and the basi occiput, that articulation is no longer intact. How this occurs is someone gets hit right on the greater wing. So there's a side blow to the head. They get hit right on the greater wing of the sphenoid. Okay, and this causes the sphenoid. We are now going to talk about a lateral strain pattern. What happens in a lateral strain pattern is the person gets hit on the side of the head right where the greater wing of the sphenoid is. So it's a lateral blow. Boom, coming right to the side of the head, right where the greater wing is. On this case, it's going to be the right side. And what that is going to do, it's going to cause the sphenoid to rotate counterclockwise, okay? But we're going to call it rotation to the right because see how the basi sphenoid is moving to the right? Now, to compensate, the occiput is going to also move in a counterclockwise rotation. But as you're going to see is that's going to cause the basi occiput and the basi sphenoid to move away from each other. That articulation is no longer intact. It is therefore a pathological pattern. Okay, so a lateral strain is a pathological pattern. So let's talk axes and planes of a lateral strain pattern. Okay, now you're going to have two axes and they are going to be vertical axes. All right, one's going to be right over the body of the sphenoid. Here we go. And the other axis to be right over the foramen magnum where the occiput is. So here are our two axes. And rotation is going to occur around a vertical axis. So you have two bodies going around two vertical axes causing rotation. We've taken care of the axes. Now the plane is going to be a transverse or horizontal plane. They're each going to have their own, which they are going to rotate around. So you can really see that they're rotating around a vertical axis in a transverse or horizontal plane. So that's where a lateral strain is occurring. Two transverse axes in a horizontal plane. We need to talk about the movement of the sphenoid and the occiput. So let's put our clocks there to see if they're moving clockwise or counterclockwise together. All right, and let's say we have a right lateral strain. Okay, so they got hit on this right side. So the basi sphenoid is moving to the right. And what's going to happen is, as you can clearly see, as the basi sphenoid moves to the right, the sphenoid is moving counterclockwise. As you can also see, during a right lateral strain pattern, the occipital squama is moving to the right as well. And so you can see that the occiput is also moving counterclockwise. So, in a right lateral strain pattern, you have both the sphenoid and the occiput moving counterclockwise or rotating in the same direction. So we're talking about a lateral strain pattern. Lateral strain pattern occurs when someone gets hit, there's a side blow right on the wing of the sphenoid. 
Okay, so right here, they get hit right here with a lateral blow. What happens is here's your sphenoid, they get hit right here, okay? And again, we're gonna use my hand as a sphenoid. And the sphenoid, the greater wing gets tipped counterclockwise. You can see the basi sphenoid moving to the right. So they get hit on the right, it tips the sphenoid counterclockwise, so the basi sphenoid is moving to the right. Now the occiput compensates by the occipital squama also moving counterclockwise. So this is the movement you have with a right lateral strain pattern. Right lateral strain, right lateral strain, right lateral strain. And again, it's named after the basi sphenoid moving to the right. As a basi sphenoid rotates to the right and the sphenoid moves counterclockwise, your index fingers are going to move to the left as the occipital squama also moves in counterclockwise, okay? Your pinky fingers are going to move to the right. So what's gonna happen in for a right lateral strain pattern where the, where the basi sphenoid is moving to the right, your pattern is going to be right lateral strain, right lateral strain, right lateral strain, right lateral strain.